actual supercomputer is running our reality and we don't have a clue yep. as to how to operate it. Broadcasting live from the world's most famous beach on the world's most famous fringe station. This is Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Roop, and we are live on Fringe FM, KTOK Digital Broadcasting. It's August the 2nd. As we uh, are enjoying this, uh, I guess, the Aquarius new moon, we might be moving out of that. I don't know, but I know who does know. Jeff Harmon is here with us again, once again, to tell us what's going on in the cosmos, the energy, what's to come. And, uh, you know, we have uh, only a few uh, spiritualists and astrologers on the program that we keep having back, and that's for a good reason. Because with all the stuff going on nowadays online, with every person being an astrologer and medium, I can assure you that uh, Jeff is, bar none, one of the best astrologers I know personally, and you all know, too, if you've been following this show. But if you haven't, uh, just so you know, Jeff Harmon is a second-generation, world-renowned master astrologer and spiritual advisor with 47 years of experience, and he uses ancient techniques, including classical, Vedic, Nadi, Kabbalistic, and astrolocation astrology, combined with decades of Vedic planetary gem prescription expertise to assist his clients. And um, Jeff... I know we got a little bit of a late start, but man, that's fine. It's totally worth it. And I'm glad to have you here. I can't wait to hear what you got to say about what's coming. Well, thanks for having me, Joe. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we got to, boy, I'll tell you what. I, I think if we've ever had a time where life was insane, it certainly is now, isn't it? I mean, with all that's going on in the world, it is crazy. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And the astrology shows it. Absolutely mirrors it. Um, I've been, I don't know, Joe, if you follow, but I started a new podcast. It's um, Jeff Harmon Astrologer, and you can get it on YouTube. And I've been talking, we put out a weekly show, and uh, it's been fun. Um, we've been working on some other stuff, but that's kind of a small little pilot we've been t just testing. And I've been mentioning on that the insanity that's coming towards us with the United States. And of course, we see it with Biden and Trump and, of course, all the political stuff. But we're also seeing it. You know, you and I were talking on the way in, Joe, um, just before the show about just how expensive everything has gotten. And, um, God, I was saying, you know, way, way back, probably, God, 15 years ago, I, I was on a couple of different shows. One of them was George Norrie, and, and George had said to me, and he said, Jeff, what do you think of the Mayan calendar? I said, not much. I said, I don't get a single thing that's ever going to happen with the Mayan calendar. And, of course, if everybody remembers, 2012 came and 2012 went, and nothing happened. Sold a lot of holes in the ground, a lot of ammunition, a lot of food, which is not a bad thing to have anyhow. But the bottom line is nothing happened. And I said, watch out for 220. Well, 220 forward, Joe, was exactly the trigger point. So we had a Saturn-Pluto conjunction. Obviously, everybody remembers it was the scam pandemic, right? And um, I'm not saying COVID wasn't real, because it certainly was. <clears throat> they, cle they clearly released it, and it affected a lot of people. 
but the astrology showed it to the T. We had a Kalasarpa yoga, and we had the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. But what I think is more than that, <clears throat> excuse me, is there was a 240-year Saturn-Jupiter cycle. And this goes way back. This, this is very ancient, what we call mundane astrology. And it, it literally does seem to predate like three, 4,000 BC was when some of the original cycles were reset. And of course, people might say, well, that's close to the flood of Noah. Well, it sure was. And um, every about a thousand years, we get what we call great conjunctions in fire trines. And it's very special conditions. It's in the first, what we call triplicity or first bound, actually, first term. Those are called Egyptian bounds of the sign of Aries. And then about every 240 years, we get what we call mutation conjunctions. Well, the last great conjunction was when George Washington was finishing uh, his time with the British Army and had left and, of course, joined the colonists and was the formation of this country, and which is just about 240 years ago. And, um, of course, the United States is 247 years right now. And that was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Huge change, huge, huge, huge change. And I mean, right. anyone who looks at history, there's no question. The world has drastically altered since the 1700s, which was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Well, what happened also, not only COVID, but I believe these new one world orderers knew this. They also knew that we were going to get a new mutation conjunction. And it's pretty safe to say, if everyone thinks about what the world's like now versus where it was in 2019, it is completely different. Yeah. Not only has COVID devastated the economy, yeah. but the psychological mindset, not only the coercion that we're seeing on social media, people getting canceled, but this whole wokeness, Furthermore, there is this whole charge for the New One World Order to shut down all of the existing energy systems and basically bankrupt everything and put in windmills and electric cars. You know, my brother almost burned down his house day before yesterday. He called me up. He says, my God, he says, I can't believe it. He said, a lithium ion battery caught on fire. He's got remote control airplanes. And uh, I'm hearing this from a lot of people where they have uh, electric motorcycles, electric uh, oh, yeah. scooters, and Teslas, too. They catch on fire. The fire department will tell you when these lithium-ion ba batteries catch on fire, get away from them because, or, or throw them out the window if it's in your apartment or house because you can't put them out. You can use all the water you want. You can use the dry chemical. You can use anything. Nothing will put them out. They extinguish when it depletes because they supply their own fuel and oxygen as they burn. So it's one of the most dangerous things to have. And, of course, many people have been quoting that not only is this energy insanity, you know, not rooted in science when it comes to the climate change. because It's not, it's not rooted in practicality, period. No, it's not. You, know. yeah, you, you, can't, you can't rip the the current systems of supply in the supply chains and energy out of our hands with nothing viable to replace it with and they, they're, they're creating more pollution with the mining and the processing and manufacturing of lithium-ion batteries and the charging of them by by far than what any gasoline or diesel powered vehicle is doing so what are they up to well, you know, that that's the big thing. Well, why why is this all happen? Why are we in this twilight zone insanity? Well, I think we have a movement right now to probably get rid of a lot of the population um, and replace them with AI. They have this wet dream that they can just replace us all with AI and eliminate three quarters of the population. And um that's that's what they're up to. Well, there's and been too many people that have slipped up and said it out of their own mouth too. There's been too many speakers in in Congress and in in 
uh, not just Congress, but heads of corporations, way too many that have said it with their own mouth at this point. We'd be better off if the population was smaller. Like, that's not cool to say, right? Like, and then, uh, you know, you got other guys saying, well, that too. And then we want everybody to be eating bugs in 10 years. Uh, this is, it's stupid, <laughs> right. you know. It's way dumb. past stupid. Yeah. Well, and, and not only that, listen to Klaus Schwab. Whoever is the controller of AI will be the ruler of the world. I'm, I'm like, what am I listening to here? You know, am I am I listening to a, an Austin Powers movie? You know, a James <laughs> right. Bond movie? I mean, it's just insane. And you you see what's going on, the transparency. Gates is buying up all the farmland. The Chinese are coming in just massively uh, medicating to put MNR. They're putting mRNA in our foods. Yeah. I don't care if you're an herbivore, you're a carnivore, it doesn't matter. They're putting them in our foods. And this is really dangerous stuff. So this is hitting us from all angles. And now we're seeing it politically. You you could see what's going on. I mean, Biden, he can't find his way off the stage if they don't point which way. Joe, Joe, you got to go this way. It's bizarre and, how fast that guy's falling apart, isn't it? Like, if it's even him all the time. Yeah, but yeah right. exactly. And um, clearly... The owners are running this place. So again, I always quote George Carlin. He had it down. I mean, when I years later now, I listen to the American Dream and I just go, George. I think he did that in like what oh five oh six or something like that or oh, oh he died in oh eight, so it was definitely before that, and um, he he couldn't have nailed it on the head more. It, you know, he basically said, "Forget the politicians. You have owners," and you listen to some of these people talk at these forums and particularly the stuff that leaks out, like from Rothschild, you give me control of the money and I don't care who makes the law. That's what Rothschild said. Yeah. And well, he's right because uh, there was somebody who just was a headhunter for Vanguard or BlackRock who pretty much own most lower corporations. Um, and they were saying, Oh yeah, we, we buy off every politician. It's very transparent. And, you know, I know a lot of people are very invested into this next election. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, anger and stuff around it. And, of course, a lot of people love Trump. A lot of people hate Trump. I'm not here promoting anybody. But I can tell you one thing. They do not want that guy in the White House at all. I think they'll either kill him. Of course, they are killing him already legally. They've just pummeled him. And, of course, Biden has been busted flat-footed with everything he's lied about. Yep. And they're going to find a rabbit hole that goes so deep with him. And it's not even him. It's just it, his family, I think, who got their palms grease is just the tip of the iceberg. When you start looking at all the other people on the coattails of you know Obama and Bush, the Bushes all the way back, They've all been looting the, the cookie jar from God only knows how far back. You know, it was Kennedy that um, actually JFK Jr. says a lot of very intelligent and accurate things. And, um, you know, they'll, they'll make sure he and Trump will never see the White House one way or another. If Trump actually survives the onslaught that he's going with, and he could. He actually could. He could win. Um, he has Jupiter crossing his midheaven starting next spring. I think it happens right at the end of April, beginning of May, which is right about when those primaries kick in. So if they don't shoot him or lock him up between now and then, he's actually got a really good shot. So for those people who like him, they'll be happy I said that. Uh, for those who hate him, they'll throw darts at my picture. Sure. And well, the one, the one thing I've noticed about the presidencies, I don't know about astrologically, but it always seems to me that whoever was in before, we're going to get the complete opposite. So the next time. So if you and it just keeps rolling over and over again. So if you imagine the complete opposite of Biden, that's pretty much Trump. So unless yeah, someone comes in there that's going to, you know, be as alpha and strong and I guess uh, chaos the system as much as Trump would, you know, he's probably got the best shot at it, even though uh, they're going to do everything in their power to, you know, knock him down. For sure. Yeah, I would also say here's the problem. 
when you look at the United States, the astrology of the United States, most people, most astrologers, a lot, lot of different astrologers out there use different times and everyone's arguing theirs is right. The only thing I can tell you is there's a chart called the Sibley chart, and that was named after a man named Ebenezer Sibley. He was actually a Mason. He was purported to have recorded the time that the boys started dipping their quills into the ink wells and signing the Declaration of Independence. Which, by the way, I would encourage anybody, get a copy of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and read it. Um, you'll actually be amazed that a document that is pushing 300 years old, 247 to be exact, was so well-crafted. It, it really, I think, is a pillar not just for what it stands for, but for the human essence of humanity. And it truly, truly is one of the more crafted a perfectly crafted documents I've I've ever read. It's it's really ingenious to say the least. And it is this country. And why I bring that up is because the United States has right now the sidereal Pluto return happening on it starting this next year in 2024. Now we had the tropical Pluto return. And I know there's a lot of astrologers who are tropicalists and there are also a lot who are sidereralists, which is what the Vedic astrology is. I find that both are accurate. I really do. And we had the tropical Pluto return right when Sliden Biden got in. And all this crazy stuff, the war with Ukraine broke out. And of course, Biden was busy running around shutting off all the energy spigots for the oil and the gas industry, which he did. And he's still doing it. And it's very interesting because what that's done is it's increased the cost of goods exponentially. Everyone's feeling it. When you increase the cost of diesel fuels, especially, and that one should be cheaper because it's always been cheaper, but it's only been the last few years diesel fuels more expensive than gasoline. How could that be? It's much easier to produce. And uh, isn't the, anyways, isn't it the refinement, pro it's the refinement process, yeah. right? So you bet. It's that's what's, much less refined. It's yeah. much less refined. So it's just they're just taking more profit is what they're doing. I mean, when when I think when, it's even worse than that. I think they're trying to bankrupt this system. Yeah, for sure. And the reason why the last time the Federal Reserve increased interest rates during a recession, and they can tell us whatever they want on the mind control news, we're in a recession. We clearly are. We, they just keep shoveling more money into the furnace. And then at the same time, the, the Fed is raising interest. So this is crushing middle businesses. And people may not be noticing it quite as much because Amazon still delivers to your door. You can still get more credit, but it's more expensive. And what's happening is everything is exponentially increasing. And there are many in the financial communities who are claiming we could be literally on a head-on collision with a freight train, uh, meaning we could see a major crash. Um, they keep shoveling more money. And the BRICS nation is reportedly about to release its currency this month. Right. And boy, you want to talk about a roller coaster ride. You know, that um, could potentially crash the dollar. That could. And Jeff, I got to take a, a break here at the bottom of the hour. I want to get into this a little bit uh, more deeper. Obviously, we got a lot more to talk about. So we'll, we'll be back in just like a couple of minutes, man. It's not going to take long. Stay with us. And also, I uh, want to thank our, our sponsors too Southern Sugar Leaf, Mary Ducina. You know, we love you. Mary Ducina.com, Syntropics, and. Uh, uh, chemical free body guys don't go anywhere stay with us all right jeff Harmon's here with us tonight here on lighting the void and make sure you guys use the code word fringe for, i forgot to mention before the break for those sponsors magical egypt or at event.magicalegypt.net and uh, southern sugar leaf the best uh, edibles on the planet how the south does cannabis by the way make sure all of everything that we do uses the code word friends even chemical free body we're going to be doing that 30 day challenge i'm going to try to lose some weight you can do that with me you can go to chemicalfreebody.com you can click on the bundles and there's a fringe fm bundle right there and that'll you'll be taking all the same stuff that i am and uh we got to come up with a punishment or something man if i don't do this but i'm going to be uh documenting this whole weight loss journey 
Jeff Harmon is here with us, astrologer, uh, who's been here on the show since its inception. And, um, you know, I, what I appreciated about you, Jeff, is like you shoot us straight, right? We don't get, a, you know, the, the love and light stuff all the time, right? Because people... People get, they're like, oh, I just want to hear something positive. I want to hear something positive. You know, I get that. I do. But here's the thing. Like, nothing's going to change for the better in our lives if we don't do the work that we're supposed to do. And if we don't have a little courage and start, like, I don't know if courage is the word, man. I think it's more like just stand up for yourselves. I think the whole reason why we're here is because people just don't stand up for themselves. Period. I really think that's what it is, Jeff. I mean, it's that simple to me. Well, uh, yeah, and and also you got to look at what's reality. It's like I was saying before the break. You know, literally, everyone was looking at signals that weren't happening, like two thousand the Y two K, the two the Mayan calendar, all this stuff. The world's ending every other day, right? The Shemitah, all that. None of nothing ever happened on any of those. But look at what happened from 2000 forward. I mean, the world right now is more changed, I think, in a more drastic way than we've seen it in a long, long time. And its effects could be far more reaching than we realize. When, again, we were discussing the economy, how you know shutting down the energy supply that was abundant and cheap um, in the light of the climate change stuff and there's uh, the grand solar minimum people will tell you and so will many real scientists that the, this is happen i have a i have a graph i put it up on my last podcast you just go to jeff Harmon astrologer and there's a great graph and it actually was put out by the environmental protection agency where they showed the spikes in during the dust bowl 1928 29 30 were like way higher than anything right now. This is mind control. They're telling us, oh my God, there's a heat wave. Well, yeah, there's usually heat waves every July and August. That's called summer, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere. And this is not that unusual. I mean, a few years ago, I was in Tucson, it was 118 degrees. If you want to take a ride with me up to Death Valley, it hits 124, 125 up there. Some of the hottest places in the world. And, um, you know, this is not that unusual. And they're, you know, putting all this Hollywood propaganda out that is supposed to just put us in a fear mode. And that's because they're shutting down the energy grids and they're choking off the the um, the red, red, readily supply that we've had. And it's increasing the cost of goods. It's crunching out the middle class business people. They can't afford to be in business anymore. And the cost of goods is soaring to the moon. And I think it was Thomas Jefferson. He said it best. He said, if you ever really want to destroy a country, uh, it might have been Washington, too. He said, just loot the Treasury. That's exactly what they've done. This whole you know, Green New Deal and all this crap that they're doing is destroying the economic structures of the middle class. The only thing that's going to be left is going to be the rich and the poor if it's not stopped. And I'm not fear-mongering here. What I'm saying is the astrology shows this. See, we have a Pluto return on the sidereal zodiac happening to the United States three or four times over 2024 into 2025. Plain English, just to give you an idea of the gravity of that, the Roman Empire was destroyed on a Pluto return. And many empires seem to rise and fall on Pluto returns. And they happen about every 240 to 250 years. So the United States is 247 years old. So it's it's upon us right now. And more than that, we have, there's things called primary directions. Those are fancy terms that astrologers throw around to impress each other with, which just means each rotation of the earth equals a year. And if you're a flat earther, it's still the cycles, the celestial annual cycles that the, the rotation of the earth mimics in in that model and like for instance when we're spanked on the rear and in the delivery room the next 90 days after birth will equal the next 90 years unfolding by secondary and primary directions and when you look at them they're stunningly accurate stunningly accurate um you can usually see when you're out of here you can see rises and falls we used to do stock trading where we would uh, look at the solar arcs 
on uh, public offering charts. And you would see right when the company was going up or going down. And it's pretty damn accurate. And uh, I have to tell you, the United States has a really dangerous aspect coming up this November. Right now, as we speak, Venus is retrograde. And that only happens every couple of years. But this is a very special Venus retrograde. It's happened before. It's not going to end the world. But it's an inferior conjunction is what it's called. And what that means in plain English is that Venus goes backwards and it starts heading into the sun. And that's called combustion. And it's doing it between the Earth and the sun. That's that's why they call it an inferior conjunction. If it happens on the other side of the sun, that's called a superior conjunction. So the inferior, the one that we have right now, is much stronger. In fact, that was actually referred to as Lucifer falling. And many people may have heard of the Quetzalcoatl myth, where they would actually hide the king during these times in the Mayan times, and they would literally block up their chimneys and their windows and everything else. They get all paranoid. And, you know, I, I certainly don't say we have to do that, but I think an awareness of how we operate right now is much more important because Venus retrograde always brings a lot of really weird, dicey stuff. Hence why it got the nickname Lucifer falling. And look what's going on. Look at the political mayhem we have going on, right? All the shenanigans, the hate, the, the, the really unprecedented stuff that's happening. And another thing that's happening to this country is they're flooding the borders. And there's been a lot of people who have said, these aren't just, you know, people who need sanctuary. They're saying Chinese nationals are coming in here, military age. They know that because they do a ritual where they cut off a chicken's head and drink the blood. So they know they're military people. They've got people from the Middle East coming in and Biden makes sure they've got the nice, you know, first class ride or whatever class ride he gives them, either on a plane or a bus to wherever they want to go. And this is a very mysterious situation. It's almost like, geez, is someone trying to destroy the country? And, you know, they're literally throwing gas on the fire. And you take Gruesome, who we also know as Newsome here in, in California, land of the fruits and nuts. He is, I, I'm not going to be surprised if they dust him off and run him for president at the last minute here. Because we have a lot of time before the primaries actually really get going next year. And, you know, he's destroyed this state. And almost every person who is knowledgeable in finance and in politics has said the same thing. And yet he keeps continuing on. And what's very dangerous about all this is we find all of your major metropolitan cities are going no cash bail. They're they're bridling the police officers. Um, they're doing all kinds of things, passing laws, these governors and these district attorneys to actually fuel the chaos and the mayhem of crime. And what does that do? That destroys the fabric of society further. It's like a psyops. It breaks everyone's morale down. They're like, oh, God, what are we going to do? You know, uh, they're, they're afraid to go to their houses. And it's really bad in certain places. Uh, other places, it's fine. But in your big metropolitan areas, it's pretty scary from what I'm hearing and seeing. And then you look at what they're doing to the energy grids, further flooding the borders, further, you know, just every angle they're trying to destroy this country. Well, that's a Pluto return. And I really believe these people at the top of the pyramid who aren't the politicians, forget the District of Criminals. That's what I call Washington, D.C., these, you know, you, you got to look at the top of the funnel. Where's the money being poured in above the Bank of International Settlements, above the Fed? You know, like a lot of people have said, oh, Jerome Powell, he's actually a good guy. Well, maybe he is, but he's at the bottom of the funnel. He doesn't control what gets put in at the top. And and really, this is pretty simple when you look at it. Um, the wheels of society will screech to a halt if you stop money. And that's been the technique, you know, throughout history. And you look at Stalin, you look at Mao, you look at all the communists that have gone back. This is the tools they use. They restrict the supply and demand. And pretty soon everybody goes broke. And then they scream, please save us. And if they slip digital currency in, <laughs> I mean, if they listen to me or you, Joe, and they don't like the way we talk, well, sorry, can't buy anything today. We turned your money off, you know, and, Things come to a real fast halt when you have 
something far more utopian than uh, 1984 ever was when they start directly controlling your money. And, you know, I'm, I, I think we're going to get through this, but I think we're at a collision course right now between the globalists and the nationalists. And I have to say, the globalists have seemed to put a pretty big first round dent into things. And I think we're coming into round two here of the fight that really begins this fall. And I think we're going to see an insane time this next year and a half or so. It looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel by the progressions on the United States and the world right around 2025. And then 28, they're going to be back at it again. So it's it's really, this is a very trying time. We have a primary directed Mars conjuncting the moon this November. And of course, Mercury goes retrograde right in the latter part of this month on the 23rd of April. I, I'm sorry, what am I saying? August. Uh, we're in August. So, um, and that happens right as Mercury stations and goes direct. So this is, you know, pretty wild stuff right now. Mercury's actually going to go direct on September 3rd, but Mercury stationing and, of course, retrograding backwards on August 23rd. So right as Mercury is stationing and going retrograde, Venus is stationing to go direct in the first few days of September. And this all brings us into October and November of this year, where I think we're going to see a lot of crazy stuff lighting up. I really do. And next year, we begin the Pluto return on the United States. And moreover, for the first time ever, we have primary directed Saturn in the United States conjuncting Mars. Now, if anybody knows anything about astrology, and a lot of people do today because they're getting more and more familiar with it, Saturn and Mars, that's like lighting a fuse to a powder keg. And hopefully I'll be wrong. Hopefully, you know, by 225, you know, we'll have another election, everything will be fine. But I think we're going to see probably some of the most dramatic, and we already are seeing some of the most dramatic, uh, I think, activity in this country that we've ever seen in modern times. And um, clearly, since the Civil War, people are at each other's throats. Everyone hates, you know, each other who if they're not of their, you know, thinking. It's it's very, very tenuous right now. And hopefully we get through this without too much problem. Well, let me ask you this, Jeff. So for for someone that's listening, that's thinking, well, I don't even know if I believe in astrology, right? But right, let's, right. the idea of what I you're don't know saying, if I believe in astrology. <laughs> so there you go. Right. So the idea of what I don't you're believe in anything, I, I, I like to critically examine things, you know? Sure. But, but the idea that what you're saying makes people feel like that there's a fate that that is destined for them, that they cannot change. You know, that's not true. Um, no, it's an energy. See, that that's where I think astrology got woo woo. And and the religions had a great contribution to that. It's the work of the devil. Right. Astro the ancient astrologers had it right. They were extrapolating astronomy to uh, the activities of life on Earth. And I don't think astrology predicts the future. I think it influences it. No different than traffic influences the road. It's energy. If you jump in your car and you head down the road, you're going to contend with if it's a free, you know, flying down the freeway with no traffic and your favorite music on, or if you got a lot of traffic or some crazy drivers, you're going to contend with whatever comes your way. And that's how astrology is. It's cycles. It's not predicting the future. It's not, you know, you don't even need to believe it. Uh, in, in the 70s, I didn't even believe this stuff. And my mother presented it to me. And I thought, come on, you know, I was I was into physics and electronics and cutting down trees. And, you know, I was, I was very linear and into music. And I, I did not even think astrology was real. And, uh, you know, Claude Swanson, who just died, was a very astute physicist. And he was the same way. We used to have discussions over in Tucson 10, 15 years ago, actually 15 years ago. And he would... Uh, you say, Jeff, I, I, if I was sitting here with you, you know, 10, 15 years ago, he said, I, I wouldn't even talk to you. He said, I, I was trained in physics. I don't believe 
in astrology. I said, you know what, Claude? I said, I don't believe in it either, but I see its results, especially when you get away from the modern woo-woo, love, light, and clueless sun sign crap, and you start looking at the way the ancients did. It's astronomy, and it's all it is. And it's geometry, astronomy, and it's just as scientific as Ohm's law and electricity, and it is. And I see it. I see it all the time um, where people have cycles. Like, you just hit a K2, Dasha, Joe. You know, you and I were talking. I mean, you, know, you might say, well, what does that mean, Jeff? Well, the, the K2 is the moon's south node. It's the eclipse point. It's not bad, but it's unusual. See, K2 is the portal. See, the, the moon's north and south nodes are not planets. They're referred to as Rahu for the north node and K2 for the south node. So you just moved into a seven-year K2 dasha. It was interesting on the way in. You said, oh, yeah, I just moved. Well, <laughs> K2's in the fourth house. So it, that'll move you. And it makes you know, a lot of changes come up. It's not the end of the world. It's just this. And what's really great is you're going to hit a 20 year Venus dash in 2030. So you're, you're just acclimating to this. And then what's interesting is in another literally 26 days, you hit a sub period of Venus. So, you know, it's a, it's a lot of powerful changes. All of us have this going on constantly. It's just, we, we are like avatars in a lot of ways. We, we think, with our rational minds, you know, through our five senses and the religions and so many parts of society have, I think, kept us from realizing how powerful we really are with our ability to tap into the upper portions of the mind. In the Hebrew, they, they actually call that the chokmah, which is the wisdom and the divinity. That's, you know, you or you talk about Hermes Trismegistus and so many Plato and uh, Aristotelian philosophy and Platonic things and on and on, you know, all the way back to the Egyptians and the Chaldeans and the, and the Vedantic stuff. This is all where we were before. Modern mes mechanistic society has really pulled us down into the sewer of the lower conscious mind, which is fine, but it's not very... Uh, advanced. It it puts us in fear mode. It puts us in making money mode all the time. And the, the machinery of society can really shut down the spiritual parts of us. And um, and and this, I think the demons and the spirits love that stuff because there's nothing they love better than war. They love war. Uh, they they really do. They they um, I well, think they would destroy the human race if they could. Sure, sure. And I think. You know, and speaking of like these dashes and stuff, you, when you look at all the different dashes in there, because I've studied a little bit of Vedic stuff, there's not a whole lot of good dashes, period. I mean, there's every time you pull up another different uh, dasha, like what's the worst one that you can get? I forget the name. It's like three words or something like it's there's a lot of scary stuff in there, you know. Well, there um, is, but but also you got to be careful because a lot of that stuff has been misinterpreted. So you're you're. K2 is in a fire trine. So it's in sidereal Sag. So the fire trines rule a type of karma that has become ripe to release. So in you're lucky because it's actually influenced by the moon, which means change, lots of change. See, your, your K2 is seventh from the moon. So there is nobody who's going to experience the doshas the same way. It's always, always, always going to be completely unique. See, that's what I love about Nadi astrology, which is a branch of Vedic astrology. You can never have two individuals experience it the same way. Even the ones who say, yeah, but I'm a twin, okay? Well, well it's, it's really interesting because the soul is senior to astrology, and that's where the religions were right. The astrology is the influence upon the lower nefesh, is what they call it in the Aramaic right. and Hebrew, it's the lower conscious mind. And um, it's not us, it's our perception of reality during these incarnations. And the doshas really grasp the aura. Um, and so you're going to find, you know, this K2 dasha, lots of change because it's aspected by the moon. But that's not the only thing that's going on. I mean, you have also the progressions of 
See, in Nadi astrology, you have to progress Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, and Ketu. And those make all kinds of really powerful, powerful aspects as they go through. So, yeah, let me just look at here. Yeah, you're at, uh, let me just see here. So, let's see, you're into 12, 24, 48. At 48, you have a huge, huge shift going on. Let me just see when that happens. See, you were born with both Jupiter and Saturn retrograde, so is Mars retrograde. Wow, you were killed in the last lifetime, it shows here. So the, the interesting thing Awesome. I was is, murdered. See what I mean? Yeah, that's what it, that's what it shows. Yeah. Uh, I would buy that. Um and and how how you know, a lot of people say, well, retrograde planets are bad. No, they're not. They say they were cut short. Um, uh, usually a, a retrograde planet means you didn't get to complete something. And that's why I love Nadi astrology, because it, it looks at it completely different from anything in the West and even, quote unquote, Vedic astrology. Jupiter is the breath of the soul. Saturn is the karma. If you look at the glyphs, you can actually see all the glyphs of the planets come from the circle, which is the seed of creation, which is the sun, or the portals called stars in the heavens, and the moon, which is the crucible, and the cross, which is spirit being manifest on the physical world, at least this one. And what's interesting is Jupiter is the crescent of the moon over the cross. So it's like a divine parabolical, just scooping up that energy and concretizing it into your reality, where Saturn is exactly the opposite. It is the cross over the crescent of the moon, which means it's previously created energies that are now becoming manifest through the karmic release. There's an old saying, God created time so everything wouldn't happen at once. And that's the interesting thing about astrology, is it's the perception of time. And there is no time. I mean, if you exit or astral travel out of the body, there's no time. In fact, many disincarnates have reported and angels say that the lunations are reverse. A full moon on the astral plane is a new moon here, and a new moon here is a full moon there. So it's really interesting stuff how, you know, everything is mind. God created the entire cosmos as well as all the upper, upper dimensions. It's all a state of mind. And um, everything, all causation is, well, is mental. And I think to uh, say the least, uh, you know, individually and on a, I guess you could say a societal level, we're all in this state of becoming right with it, with our souls. And you don't, you don't yeah, get there right. by just, just staying in pleasure, right? Like it's, it's almost like um, people think, well, I'm just, I want to, I'm just stay in my house and, you know, eat bonbons and, it would just be comfortable for the rest of my life, but your soul doesn't grow that way. Just like your body wouldn't uh, harden if you didn't exercise, your soul wouldn't grow if it didn't transform through tough things and stuff like that. So we do it individually, and we do it yep. as a society too. You know. Yeah, it's it's um, it's interesting because you know, I always say it builds character, right? But uh, how much character we, do we need? But um, there's also the good stuff, too. Like, there's yeah. all kinds of, you know, when you really study the geometry of ancient astrology, it's quite interesting because the trines always bring good things. And the squares always bring adjustments. The oppositions bring difficulties. And the uh, sextiles always bring a catalytic change. See, like, you've got... Uh, some good stuff here coming up. Uh, as you start getting into October, November, you've got Uranus trining the midheaven IC axis, you know, also got it sextiling the moon. So everyone has a plethora of transits and progressions. Nobody is experiencing the same thing the same way. I'm just poking around looking at your chart. And just like the United States, you know, again, everyone was saying, you know, the Mayan calendar. And I, I went, I, I can't come up with anything with the Mayan calendar. But I said, watch out for 224. Well, it, look in hindsight, what really 9-11 happened on the Saturn-Pluto opposition in 2001. The banks crash in 2008 and 2009 on the Saturn Pluto square and the conjunction, which also had a Kalasarpa yoga happened right literally in January of 2020 and the fall 
I, I should say the um, winter solstice of 2020 was the Saturn Jupiter conjunction. And that's right when this clown got in the office. And we have seen nothing but just insanity ever since. And, you know, I think it was Mao. No, it wasn't Mao. It was Lenin. He said, you know, we don't care if we kill three quarters of the human race as long as the quarter that's left become communists under our rule. And I saw that written on the wall of the Reagan Library. And at my, I did a double take. I said, does that really say, did he really say that? And I researched it. He did. And you look at Mao, you look at, you know, of course, everybody talks about Hitler, which was horrible. And, you know, we look throughout history back in time, and this is nothing new. There's always been men in power who get possessed by these demonic forces, and they try and kill off as many people as they can under their rule. They cause a lot of trouble, but they never win. They never win. See, that's because creational the creational force is superior to the destructive force. Everything in this world is good and evil. It really is. And the Shari HaGilgum, which is a text that is quite fascinating, it's a Hebrew text. Shar'ar means gate, and HaGilgum means cycling. And it talks about how the earth is like a soul cauldron. It is a place of purification and rectification. So, you know, we, we, we definitely do see a lot of challenge here. And, you know, getting a body isn't easy. But uh, Yeah, I think... I think um... Well, it just kind of freaks people out, right? Because astrology isn't, it's still intimidating to a lot of people. And we don't know just how influential some of these energies are, right? So the, so I like what you say about the traffic and, and stuff like that. But nevertheless, uh, it seems to me, uh, would you say, Jeff, that astrology, like the astrological energies, and this is why when we start the show, you start talking about current events and stuff like that is because it definitely affects more on a societal level than possibly an individual. Because if, an, let's say, an, like individuals are aware of astrology, there's certain things they can do or, or be aware of, but on a whole, uh, not so much, right? It's like the conscious and the unconscious. So the more people there are, the more unconscious energy is present that can be affected. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a big topic because that's been one that has been approached pretty pretty intelligently by a lot of the ancient astrologers. Benadi had talked about that. Dorotheus, who was an Egyptian king, who was an astrologer. A lot of people have heard of Ptolemy. But the yogis in India, the Vedantic, and the older stuff in the Nadi astrology speaks about the same thing, that as we process around the central sun, and I think it's much more than even that. There are galactic cycles that apparently happen over a 250 million year period that really alter the conscious, you could say, waves of souls that come through here. The Rosicrucians talked about that. The Egyptians certainly did. So the Chaldeans. And what's interesting is that we're all, it's like being on an airplane. You know, you're you're going to be affected by what that plane does one way or another, whether it lands or doesn't. Right. But on the other hand, each person will experience the flight in a different way. So we're all subject to the mundane astrology, which is the energies of the times, like the whole world experienced the Saturn Pluto conjunction and the Kala Sarpa Yoga of COVID. And it left an indelible effect. I personally think these boys at the top of the pyramid were very aware that that was coming. I think they're extremely tuned into astrology. Um, I, I know they are. I had one teacher who was actually in London. He was uh, an Indian. He was qu quite old. And uh, I was very blessed to, to study with him for a short time. And he told me, he said, I do electional astrology for the Rothschilds and the bankers in London. I said, wow, that's really cool. And for those who are listening, electional astrology is picking an auspicious time to get married, sell real estate, go, do elective surgery, take a trip, whatever it is, concretize a filing a corporation. I do so much of that for people. And what's interesting is it puts an energy on it that it's almost like casting metal or casting a, a mold. It, it puts that energy of the time on it. So you, we're all affected by the world. 
and at the time we do things. And then we have our individual cycles, which are exceedingly powerful. Everybody has the effects of transits and progressions and doshas on them. And even if they don't know it, belief is not required. And everyone's going to go on their own journey. They actually say the angel attaches the spirit, psyche, and so at conception, not at birth. And then when we exit the womb, that angel waits for the exact celestial moment as we're on this, you know, changing celestial cycles of the daily cycles as well as all the energies. And at first breath, we're tied into that body. And if you're born at a different place, longitude and latitude, or time of day, you're going to have a completely different chart, especially when you get out into fixed stars and many of the lunar mansions in Vedic astrology. It's really a lot more complex than just your sun sign. And um, every individual will then, through that resonant timestamp, kind of take their journey through what we call life uh, with those cycles. And it's very interesting because everyone is on a different journey. You, all right. And uh, this uh, that's exactly what I was trying to get at, too, by the way. I think uh, socially, it's just like anything, though, right? Uh, I mean, we're at the top of the hour, but socially, uh, you could talk to a person, have a wonderful conversation with somebody one-on-one, and it's fantastic. And they're good people, and everything is in harmony. Uh, but the more people, mm-hmm. as soon as it becomes a crowd, uh, influences become more powerful unconscious uh let's just say hiccups or unawareness becomes more prevalent you know you notice that right like as more people are involved and that's the issue yeah. too i think uh, i think that's something that uh the let's just say the powers that be are pretty well you know and any intelligent person is well uh, aware of that fact so the problem yeah. is is the people that are aware of this need to be in my opinion need to stand up speak up and fight for other people a little bit more, right? I'm not saying you're better than anybody, but we have leaders and we have followers for a reason, I think, you know. Yep, time marches on, and it's a very interesting dynamic, no question about that. You got to take a break. We'll be back with Jeff Harmon, and uh, we'll ask some dates. We might open up the phone lines. This stuff's going by pretty quick, but, uh, yeah, go to his website, too, at jeffharmon.com. And uh, you can get a reading. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do on there. I like your new website, by the way, Jeff. Looks cool. Oh, thanks, bud. We'll be right back. Yeah. Seems like uh, it's always good and bad news when Jeff Harmon comes around. But uh, when the man comes around, that made me think of that song, Jeff. You know that song, right? The man yeah, comes yeah. around and he gives you the astrological news. I've been we've been uh, studying a lot of the the Kabbalah here lately, like deep, you know, kosher Kabbalah, the 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 good stuff, yeah. right? Uh, and um, yeah, it, yeah. it's spot on with what you say about the soul and its growth and everything that you're supposed to go through, right? So, oh yeah. Now you do Kabbalistic astrology too. Do you help people with that? Where you can help them, like the. Uh, kind of show them where they are maybe on their soul journey or try to help them see it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the naughty and the ancient traditional stuff really helps uh, put a, put a light on that. You know, really the ancient mystics, um, if, if you're really into true Kabbalah, you, you're probably going to run into the Ari. You're probably going to run into Rabbi Abalafia, uh, the uh, Rabbi Hayam Vital. These are really uh, wonderful documents, and that's just a few. And of course, e- even you know the Trace Magestus is is certainly a part of that too. But um, what I like about the Vedic stuff and the Nadi, as well as the the ancient Hebrew, is it's much more than just astrology. We're we're not. Our sun signs or whatever all these astrologers say we are. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And astrology is only the unfoldment of the release of karmas as we go through time. And that's a lot different than what modern... And that's why I really didn't like modern astrology. When I first got exposed to it, I thought, eh, you know, I'm not too interested in this stuff. But the ancient stuff really plugged into who we are as spiritual beings having a physical experience. And 
the the ancient Kabbalistic stuff, the Shara Gilgam, is a wonderful text. It's very parallel to this stuff the Magus of Strobolo says. Uh, another text I really like is the uh, Rabbi Fateah. He put out a book called Minhat Yehuda, and it is story after story of possession of disincarnate souls attached to living people. And this gets into a whole realm of astrology that has, I think, largely been lost because people don't know about it. And this is where you start looking at when does karmic release show in the chart? Like particularly the stuff I was mentioning before, secondary and primary directions and the progressions in Nadi astrology really show this stuff in a totally different way than what modern astrology does. And you start seeing that really what we're experiencing is the unfoldment and creation of karmic elementals. Because, you know, us Westerners, we hear the word karma right right away. We go, oh, my God, that's got to be bad, right? Well, karma can also be good. And, and a better, maybe more Western way of saying that is this is etheric energy attached to the soul that has now become ripe to be manifest in what we call our reality world or our, our our lives. And Nadi astrology really looks at that, and I think in a very healthy way, when you get the older stuff. And, and it's, it's basically earth and water trines are of the moon, and that is free will. That is when you're creating with your own desires and creation, which we all always are. But when you get into doshas and progressions in fire and air, which is of the sun, those are more things that are seeded and you have to experience. And there's a lot of different levels of these karmas broken down in a text called the Puranas. There's a, a wonderful text. It's called the Bhagavata Purana. And it's about all these different waves of souls coming through here. And boy, when you talk about that, it's it's way past anything I'm ever going to understand or any human being is going to fully grasp. But it's it's a text that's thicker than a New York telephone book in 1975, and it's um, it's huge. And there's also the Mahabharata, there's the Vedas, and of course many of the Kabbalistic texts. There's you know obviously the Sefer Yitzira and all these different plethora of texts. Um, Another book I love is Meditation in the Kabbalah by Ari Kaplan. He was amazing. He he died at 40 years old and wrote close to 80 books. I don't know how he did it. Um, the Ari was another one, too. He was born blind. Uh, the Ari was um, the, the rabbi who was uh, born, I think he was in the 16, 1500s, and he was the teacher to Rabbi Hayam Vatel. And that's where the Sharia Gilgam came from. And I, I love the Sharia Gilgam because it's it's um, basically a very humble text where he'll say, my master said this, but I'm not 100% sure. You know, that's a lot different than the religions who say, this is the way it is, right? So, and it talks about how we are dumbed down in order to experience these lives the way we experience them. And I always thought, wow. If the religions ever failed, that's it right there. You know, you're all sinners and you're all going to hell. It just doesn't give us much to go on. But when you start looking at, well, wait a minute, I'm blocked consciously from fully accessing all my past lives. And the upper portions of the mind, of course, science will tell us, well, you only use 5% of your mind or 3% of your mind. Well, that's the same way of saying what the Sharia Gilgam and some of these texts I'm talking about, is that at different time periods or waves of souls throughout the millennia, there are dark times called yugas and light times. And we seem to be in a very materialistic time. There's some say we're in Kali Yuga, some say we're in Kali with the interim of Tetra. And this fits very interestingly with all these major psychological, or I should say astrological cycles on the psyche. And we're, we're heading down the rabbit hole right now. I mean, look at AI, genetic manipulation, 
um, to psychological manipulation. Now, now you have literally the state telling parents, if you don't let little Johnny or Betsy, you know, do what they want to do and and change their irreversible surgeries, we'll take your child away. I mean, this is really creepy stuff. Oh, there another yeah. thing too about that too is in the medical field, doctors are required to it, it, it whether it's a a therapist or just any practitioner. If you are, yeah. uh, if a child starts to talk about depression or anything like that, and that subject is brought up, they're required to ask them about that. Say, you know, say like you got to, I don't know, a, a, a tomboy. And we, well, I grew up all around all kinds of tomboys that were girls or, or maybe feminine guys or stuff. And they're, they don't uh, really understand themselves yet. Um, and it has stuff to do with their upbringing, That's all kinds common. of different stuff. Common, yeah. But now these doctors are, so, are required to say, well, do you feel like you're, you know, a boy or a girl? If you do, you know, we can expedite this stuff, right? So if you got little Johnny and you send him to the doctor and you're not in the room with him, you better watch out because this stuff's coming down the pike too. It's pretty creepy when you think about it. It is really eerie. Um, you know, I, I have to say, um, th there's never been a time where it's been this scary to be a parent, where you literally have the state that will rip your child out of your hands if you don't agree with what they suggest to your child. And wow, I, I got to say, never seen this one before. And this, again, fits exactly with the times that we're talking about and and all the astrological energies that I was talking about earlier. This is the Saturn-Pluto return ever since 2020. We are literally seeing a clash with freedom and fascism. And these you know, cycles have happened many times before. I mean, just look at the last century. Look at Mao might have killed they, they don't even know. This guy might have killed somewhere between 50 and 100 million people, and everybody's guessing. Look at Stalin. I mean, well, it's getting too expensive to murder all the farmers. Let's just starve them out. So cut off their food. You know, I mean, when you look at the death, look at Hitler. I mean, six million at least, and uh, or m many more than that. You know, we get another world war right now. I mean, billions could die in a nanosecond because we don't just have nuclear technology. We have the neutron technology, particle beams. A lot of people don't realize the United States alone, all of its they've perfected fission from what I've heard uh, up at Skunk Works. And what does that mean? Well, that's another type of very low level nuclear fission that can be put on an airplane and they can keep that thing in the air as long as the rivets stay in the wings. Mm. And they don't need to have anybody in it. They they can, and they don't need us to stop for gas. They don't need to stop for uh, more ammunition. Why? Because they're using megawatt particle beam and lasers on these things. They're all over the place, and nobody talks about this. No, they wouldn't disclose it anyhow. But the the firepower that's there, and this is where the real control of the world lies in the money and who has direct control over this secret weaponry. And I think. It's a lot more like men in black than they're telling us. And I think there's a lot of terrestrial and extraterrestrial interaction here and angelic and demonic. It, it's quite interesting because uh, look at Admiral Byrd in the 1940s. He, you know, the government funded this huge expedition into Antarctica and they were brought down by these beings who live in the inner earth. And, you know, this this is a general. This isn't somebody who was channeling Zulu from Zeton. This is this is a bunch of military guys. And I've actually been around a lot of these people who have said, listen, we have reverse engineered craft. And, of course, a lot of this stuff is coming out right now. And oh, yeah. did, that, you that's why the, did you watch the trial? The world. What's that? Watch the hearing, uh, the, the latest congressional hearing about UFOs and UAPs. Oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, they're, they're not well. only talking about the crashed stuff. They're also talking about biological bodies all oh, kinds yeah. of different things that they're admitting to now which i wonder if the astrology is showing that too because it makes me wonder what is real and what's not and i mean is this another thing where they're because during that uh hearing jeff 
what kept coming up from all of the people on the panel was, well, we, this is definitely a threat to our national security. Oh, yeah, well, this is definitely a threat to our national security. And no one's asking the question, like, are you sure? How do we know this is a threat? Because one guy's saying it's disturbing. I mean, you got to be careful what you trust, I think, too. You know? Well, and, and one thing's for sure. Things have been happening in this country for a long, long time. I mean, you go back to the medieval times all the way back forever. Even in the Vedas, they talk about other terrestrial beings. The Egyptians, John Wesley, it was talking about the same darn thing. I mean, so many people, I mean, look, watch Ancient Aliens, watch, you know, Skywalker Ranch. I mean, this stuff has been around a long, long time. My grandmother told me in 19, you know, I think it was like 1914 or something, they watched fireballs roll across the farm field. One went right through the front door of the house and out the back. And, you know, there's some pretty bizarre stuff that's been going on on this planet. And and let's not, you know, forget how about the people who are researching Tartaria. There's a lot of stuff that's been going on that's been hidden from us. You know, the world fairs that had free energy and all this advanced stuff that mysteriously just disappears. And um, so there's a lot going on here. Our whole perception of reality is only what we believe, you know. And when you look at the word, I, whenever I hear somebody say, well, I believe, I, I, I get nervous right off the bat because I don't believe anything. I like to observe. If it has truth and validity, which usually proves itself over time, then I'll say, okay, that's something I it will at least, you know, take into account. But on the other hand, when you believe something, in some way, you kind of suspend your critical thinking, you know. So, you know, again, that is a, a trait that I think all of us should cultivate is critical thinking. It's like, okay, if somebody's telling me something, can you back it up? Or, you know, can I compare it to something that, you know, that that's a little bit more rationalized than just blindly believing, you know? I mean, this is what they do on commercials. They'll tell you, you know, hey, you got this disease, and now here, this is what'll fix it. But it, but you could get this, this, and this for side effects. So it, the lower conscious mind is very programmable. It's very programmable. And when you look at things like the Kabbalah, People like Anastasia, the Magus of Strovolos, and any mystical journey, one of the first things they do is try and dislodge you from your reality structures so that you get into the higher, you could say, connection with the upper you know, portions of the soul and spirit and psyche, because it is definitely a a mind trip down here it really is not not that our reality is totally delusional but look at where society always ends up it's always prosperity recession depression war <laughs> it always ends up there sooner or later right we've been fairly lucky that we haven't had any major catastrophes like a world war uh hopefully we won't i think it's going to be prevented um but one thing's for sure we've had perpetual wars going on all over the place um, for a long, long time, for, you know, forever. Yeah, and sure. uh, it's it's very interesting, this planet, how it is a place of good and evil. It's it's literally a place of purification and rectification of the soul. And the Nadi astrology says we escape from Alcatraz, we get out of here when we have dissipated the lower conscious, you could say, elementals that are stored in the soul. And it's Saturn. I, I always say, forget Trinity, Neo, and Morpheus. Nadi astrology really shows this is a matrix of the soul and that we keep coming back here until we either become consciously self-aware and rise above the influences of astrology or we dissipate out the karmas and rise out of it that way. So it's very interesting stuff, and it's certainly not the way modern astrology looks at things. Yeah, I I think, um, well, I think the the alien thing has got a lot of people's attention, for sure. Um, but because they're like, oh, we're finally getting disclosure, man. There's even the guy that came, went up on the stand was like, well, when they asked him the tough questions, he's like, well, I can tell you about that, and. Uh, private room so he, the guy's preaching about uh 
Uh, well, the, the American people deserve to know the truth. And yet when they asked him the hard question, he's like, I can't divulge that information only in a private setting. I can tell you that. It's just all weird, right? I mean, I have i don't know why anybody would trust anybody that's sitting behind a government seat at this point or a corporate seat at this point. I just, that's where I'm at. I think a lot of us are that way. And with the economy the way it is, the financial stuff the way it is, what do we do, right? I mean, we, we're going to have to tap into our spirituality eventually or something because this other stuff, we have to get practical too, like you said, though. We have to get to back to reality. The love, light, and cluelessness stuff isn't working anymore. Well, when you think about it, you know, when we lose a loved one or a pet, whatever, time kind of stops. And it really is often a jolt out of our reality structure for a period of time when that happens. And in some ways, that might not be unhealthy because even though it's not pleasant to have something like that happen, but it really, you know, it's interesting. I just lost my dog a while back and I really love that dog. And a lot of people listening to me, we really get just as attached to our pets as we do to our loved ones. And I felt really bad when she died because of the way she died. And, um, I, I was actually on my motorcycle and I went to a coffee shop and I was sitting with someone and I had said a little meditation right before that. I said, you know, the group spirits who really are believed to control animals or kind of guardian animals. So we, we tend to have guardian angels, animals, they say have group spirits that the, the spirit works over the groups of animals. And I said, just take care of her. Let her, you know, really evolve. Because she was a really advanced dog. It was a really smart dog. And it was so interesting. I'm sitting in this coffee shop and the dog, her name was Shelby. She came around my head. And I'm telling you, she did. And the person sitting with him, oh my God, I see Shelby all around you. I said, I know. And she just was letting me know that she was okay. And she left. She's. I've not seen her since. That was almost a year ago now. I've not seen her since. But that dog ran around my head. So humans, as well as advanced animals, and there's a lot of those too, really, we we really have been lied to. And I think in a lot of ways about this, psychiatrists, psychologists, and many researchers of the truth find we don't die. We are short sojourners here in these meat suits called bodies. And we're, none of us are going to get out of here with all the material things we have. And there's nothing wrong with having your material goods and comforts. You know, we all need them to live, right? Got to eat, got to sleep, got to all that. But, you know, we're not that. And the world puts us in fear-based mentality which really, I think, makes us operate nowhere near to the level of consciousness that we could. Because if you look at it, then, hey, your next breath could be your last, or you might have 10 trillion more, you don't know, or, or a billion more. Right? So the, the interesting thing is, it just makes us less reactive, I think, when we find a healthier way to look at the reality. And life can get crazy, man. I mean, money is the ubiquitous thing that everybody's scrambling to make. Everybody's trying to make the money, right? It's all about, Rothschild was right. You give me control of the money, he said, and I don't care who makes the loss because they'll all dance to the money. And when we got it, we're happy. When we don't, we're scrambling to get it. And it does put a lot of stress and fear on people. So you, you can't say, oh, geez, you know, I mean, look at the people sleeping homeless under bridge. You don't want to end up there. On the other hand, how many people work their lives and end up in their mid sixties, they retire and then they get a heart attack and die. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or their health starts failing. So, you know, somewhere in this, we've got to find sanity. And I, you know, again, I don't say astrology, you know, sanity comes from within, uh, or at least you could say coping with our reality structures comes from within as a may, maybe a better way to say it. And, um, the, the way I like to look at astrology is kind of like the dashboard, the speedometer, and the tachometer, and everything I see out the windshield, you see, to use that analogy. It's what's coming at you, but you're still the driver. You're still the person in control. We still have free will. 
And many of your very advanced Kabbalists and yogis would say that the seeker was to rise above the astrology, which is very much what Daskalos, the Magus of Strolos, had talked about, is to become self-aware more to where you realize that um, even though life is tough and it can make us react real easy, um, it's also where we got to take a deep breath and realize this is all, like Shakespeare said, a big play. The The earth is the stage, or our lives are the stage, and the script might just be our interaction between what's being thrown at us karmically and our reaction to it. So it's really an interesting you know, way of looking at. Yeah, reality. because I'm I'm looking at this whole K2 thing, and it's like, oh, yeah, man, you're going to go through all this stuff. You're going to... You're going to get, uh, wait, what, you're going to have head issues. You're going to get betrayed. Don't trust anybody close ah, to you, no, no. especially you the people closest crap. to you. And it's like, what is this, man? And But what I'm saying yeah. is, is that that is the kind of stuff, too, that you hear on TV as well, right? Like there's uh there's a neurotic and like there's neurotic tendencies that we have. Like I trust, I think what is it? Neur neurosis or neurotic is when you trust uh, only yourself and nothing in the world. Or I think it's the other way around and lunacy is the one or the other. Right. So they're at opposite ends of the spectrum. And I think that's what they're doing to us. You know, they either back you in a corner to where you trust nobody or they want you to trust everything that they tell you. And you got to have like a balance. You got to have a healthy balance in your mentality in order to take this stuff on, you know? Yeah. Well, or you, you look at it from a different viewpoint, you know, like psychology and psychiatry tries to get us to rationalize and understand and be less reactive. Of course, psychiatry likes to use medication, but not always, but psychology likes to look at it and rationalize and get you to ask questions. There's many different techniques in that. And, um, What's interesting, I've got a lot of clients who are psychiatrists. Some of them are very prominent. One uh, runs the head of a state uh, board, and another one's in the federal prison systems. And it's interesting how they, they have said repeatedly, and many psychiatrists have said this, that they often think that possession is a really very real thing, uh, especially the more uh, experience they get, because they go, there's no rational models for any of this to be the way it was with certain individuals. And it's very interesting to look at it from that standpoint, because Nadi astrology, I've had a lot of discussions with this, seems to show the proclivity of someone's psyche. And it's almost like going down the rabbit hole. It's, it's very much like the matrix, you know, um, some people, are in the blue and some people are in the red pill if you want to look at it that way and it's it shows up in the configurations of the naughty astrology and certain people are very advanced and you there's angels that rule each degree of the zodiac and the rising sign is certainly one that I have found to be exceedingly accurate. Um, and you can only do it in the sidereal system. And if you took a laser and you shot it off the earth at exactly when you took first breath, which is when the birth is believed to happen, um, and at your longitude and latitude, you, you will get a sidereal angelic degree. The Goetia, the Keys of Solomon, tap into some of this stuff like the the 72 angels the shaman of force which yeah is all, in the Bible. all and this is something a lot of people don't understand too because you know how many people are into ceremonial magic now right like there's so many books about it that, that's been going on for oh, a yeah. while but when you that's read been going the, on forever. when yeah. you read the books whether you're banishing elements or astrological energy or whatever they tell you specifically to account for the sidereal locations of the planets and that uh, I think it's like fixed Leo. There's a, I know the Rosicrucians did a certain uh, a method with that too, but it was all side sidereal, right? And I don't think, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important, right? That we do the, the same methods if you're going to do that stuff. I don't get into the, you know, let's bring this spirit out into the triangle stuff. But maybe that you know the the protection and the banishings and stuff have always helped me, always. But 
Uh, I don't. Well, get there's into codes in the stuff. Psalms too. That this is what the religions have done. When you um, look at the King James version of the Bible, which really goes back to the Vulgate translations, the minute you drop that stuff out of its original text, you lose the gematria, which is the numerology and the tamira. It gets a lot of this stuff has really been lost. They just there was a synagogue discovered just recently in. Uh, Egypt that uh, is literally like uh, this amazing find. I forget the name of it, but um, I've actually ordered some documents that are coming on it. And it's amazing because they said, literally, you blow the dust off of it. It was like entombed for like 2000 years and they discovered it under the sand. It's like, wow, look at all these amazing documents. And again, there's a big divide today between astrology and the soul and religions and it's really a shame because it wasn't that way in the past and you can see it i mean you there's literally the the ancient astrologers could ascertain and i know i do this all the time the name of an angel at any given moment in the heavens that focuses on the eastern horizon. In fact, I, I do this on pendants for people. Uh, you, you can see your guardian angel, which is derived by the exact position of the inner seven planets, and you project that with the 22 Aramaic and Hebrew letters from the ascendant around the chart. And what's interesting is each zodiacal degree that that planet falls in is a letter, and then you weight that in what we call zodiacal dignities. It's called accidental and, and essential dignities, and that orders them. So, and, and again, you see the same thing in prashna in in ancient Nadi astrology, where there are it's almost literally like a computer coded matrix that these planets are in in the solar system. It's astronomy, and there are certain configurations you'll never get again. I mean, it's it's infinite. I mean, look at this. You can dial everyone on the planet with 10 numbers on your telephone. Right. Now you've got 360 degrees, you get 12 signs, 12 houses, and an infinite, infinite combinations of geometric aspects that could never be the same place twice, let alone the lunar mansions as well as the fixed stars that are not so fixed. And um, it's it's a reality machine. It's yeah. a divine reality machine. You think and that that would make sense, right? Like that's the way. Yeah. That, that's the first time, as many times you've been on this show, that you've called it that, and a divine reality making machine. Now, when it you is. say that, are you talking? Where spirit becomes manifest is is the physical world. So so, but if you think about that. Uh, and I, I don't want to get too technical and logical because I know at some point we're going to be like, well, we don't know how everything works, right? But we do understand the planets in our solar system. We understand the effects of the moon on the earth, and we understand centrifugal force and all kinds of different energetic effects, uh, light through, uh, or now we understand information through light, right? We've got that down. So we're barely tapping into how this stuff works. But the signs, here's where I have a little trouble with understanding how the signs work as a machine, right? If the universe is big as they say it is, well, we... Uh, in ancient times, they looked at these signs as if they were just uh, like in, a, in a, a clock in the sky. But in the universe, they're a whole different thing, aren't they? I mean, I could see the planets affecting us that way. But in the universe, aren't these constellations kind of way out there? They're not really like in a clock formation. Well, it's all you know? geocentric. It's, it's all you, you got to remember. Most astro well, almost all astrology that is done by astrologers is is what we call geocentric. It's earth based centric. Sure. So more more importantly, it's us based centric. It's not only earth based or geocentric. It's human centric. It's looking at your birth chart. Um, when you start getting into you know, that's what's interesting. Astrology is the fourth hierarchy. It's very low. Um, our souls are be believed to be created hundreds of dimensions above any celestial influences. 
And, you know, that's what they call absolute. That's the very upper, upper divine heavens. It's not even heavens. It's, it's the, no one knows what it is. I certainly don't. <clears throat> and they say there's 49 dimensions and 49 sub dimensions there. Then the next worlds down, Priya, is where the waters and the angelic forces get much more dense. There's 49 dimensions, 49 sub dimensions there. Yeah. Then you get into the Yetziratic world, Yetzira is where the heavens are believed to be. They claim there could be 49 parallel universes and 49 subdimensions. So when we look at astrology, oh my God, you're, you're looking at a speck in a sea of, a, of, of sand, uh, literally, because astrology, the way we look at it here from a person's standpoint is only geocentric to earth and more importantly, ge geo personal is really the better way to maybe kind of invent a term for it. So we are all egoic beings. And, and this may be why we're so dumbed down right now is we all have our, it's called the Atma Karaka. It's the, the soul root indicator. It's the sense of self that allows me to be me and you to be you and you know, Hey, this is mine. That's yours. And you know, we, we, we get into this material, division of senses of self and that's where astrology becomes very geocentric or very egocentric is maybe another way to look at it and it's very fascinating because the uh, rabbi fatea would say these ways of souls just keep reincarnating and so does the naughty astrology until we escape from alcatraz and become either dissipated with the elementals we've created in all these incarnations or we become self-aware. And that's not something you can pick up a book and learn. It's something that happens when the soul starts bleeding down into the lower conscious mind known as the nefesh in a way that spiritually really opens the door, kicks the door open. And all of a sudden, you become more self-aware. And that's mainly people will call that muksha. Muksha was a term used in the Vedantic literature, which means you've now uh, escaped from the bondages of reincarnation or incarnation. And there are some who still come back. And these may be the ascended masters that many people talk about. And uh, very deep stuff, very, very deep stuff. And the Puranas address a lot of that. They talk that there's some souls that actually are very evil, and they need to play those out. Rabbi Yehuda would literally have to divide a soul. There's actually what they call purifications and rectifications, where he would send a soul back for incarnation, and the other portion of it would move on. So there's something going on on planet Earth, clearly, that uh, the religions have touched into, uh, and that is, it is a place of purification and rectification. There's a whole text in the ancient Hebrew called the Shari Teshuvah. It's very cryptic, but Teshuvah means the gates of clearance of karmas, and of course, that got extrapolated into repentance. So... You know, and you're all sinners and you're all going to hell type of thing. But it was much more than that, in my opinion, when you start blending these ancient texts, well, what they really mean. And the problem is the translations upon translations get the translators start inserting what they think they want it to say or what they, you know, interpret it to say. Not that they're wrong. But, you know, it gets mishmashed. It's like tracks in the snow. You know, the, well, it, the clarity. Especially gets, gets the long. Kabbalah, because it has a secret language in it. It's known, yeah. well known. The Kabbalistic books are the five Kabbalistic books, you know, uh, uh, like the Torah. And, and when I'm not talking about the Sefer Yetzir, I mean, just the, the, the Hebrew books, the main five or whatever they talk about. They talk about this... Uh, language of branches which has a lot of hidden knowledge in there so when someone picks up the book and says well you know that doesn't make sense they probably meant this and then they change it it changes the whole uh it could change the whole hidden meaning of it you know sometimes you you bet in fact there's actually a wonderful text about the torah and it is in fact i got it on the shelf here if i can find it here it's um 
it, it actually talks, and, and the, you get the same thing in the Vedantic literature. It's called a vidya, or it's a spirit or an angel. It's the angel of the Torah will come. They, there's like all these layers. You have the literal meaning, then you have the secret meaning, then you have the esoteric or spiritual depth of it, and then there's the hidden meaning. It, it's You see the same thing in the Psalms. You know, everybody's beating the, in magic, they're beating the, the keys of Solomon, but the Psalms has a certain psalm where there's a verse in it that actually is believed to tap into the angel who holds the gate to the Shem Hamaforsh, which is Exodus. You know, of course, we hear the Moses part of the Red Sea and all the Israelites pass through. But that's metaphoric, I think, literally. And I don't mean to demean anyone who, you know, has a, a different belief. But I think it's metaphoric for when we you could say clear the lower consciousness and it opens the gate into the upper realms of spiritual awareness because um it's it's very interesting how there are so many secrets and layers to the psalms the psalms to me are really it's called tehillim in the hebrew are very interesting documents because some of those psalms are probably 4000 plus years old uh oh. psalm 91 definitely is and um and and no one knows i don't know but uh clearly they're very very ancient and there are codes within there uh they're they're ciphers it's it's uh, tamira is what they call it and you fold the alphabet in different ways through certain ciphers like there's the odd bash the odd god all and that just comes those fancy words just come from the order that you rearrange the aramaic and hebrew alphabet in and there's ak beaker there's all these really complex uh, Rosic the Rosicrucians had this stuff too, uh, where yeah. they would actually do it with the English, mm -hmm. but nothing seems to work. And by the way, the Sanskrit does the same thing. The Tamil, Sanskrit, and Dravidian are very, very ancient languages. And a lot of the verses and what they call them Shastras are coded like this, where you literally have a numerological code that it means and you got to unfold that and this gets into some interesting stuff because a lot of the scholars are saying well you know we're finding that the writing really falls apart around 3000 bc and it was more rudimentary and that, that's the opinion of some at least and there was one yogi who said that's because we didn't need language we were so advanced consciously that we were telepathic we were much higher in our connective, you could say, psyche. And, of course, this relates to the pineal gland and the pituitary and the cleanliness of the glandular system, which, you know, again, <laughs> all the stuff we're breathing and eating and the pesticides and the crap that's sprayed in our food and in the air and the chemtrails. I mean, no wonder why we're all down here in the sewer. And it's it's been a steady decline, they say, in this particular yuga now that'll change I, that's why you know i'm with george carlin the earth is a big dog and we're the fleas i'm not worried about the earth it's humanity that has, has always the one to evolve the earth always resets itself I, everything comes from the earth well and sure yeah we, and we only got a, just a couple of minutes here left jeff so i want to make sure that uh you get your final kind of message out there for everybody like what was you know, because I know you you do, I know you go help people and then you come back and do radio shows again and because there's messages that you're trying to get out here. What's what's the, you know, the biggest thing you want everybody to know right now as far as astrologically is concerned? And then go ahead and give uh, any links out, your podcast out again, too. I'd love to hear about that again. Yeah, well, I, I don't know that I'm bearing any torch. You know, I, I think that's what I get a lot of enjoyment on. That's why I keep doing this is, is, is helping people, especially yeah. parents, with children and, and people moving. You know, it's a tough time for everybody right now. It's a very uncertain time. And I think the thing I've been talking about, I, I urge people to go to our podcast. It's uh, Jeff Harmon Astrologer on YouTube, and we're going to be expanding that real soon. But it, it, that's kind of a an experimental template that we're we're just playing with right now. We're actually working on a show. And um, the interesting thing um, is we're kind of bouncing between, you know, general news correlated to the mundane astrology, which is kind of fun. 
and how it mirrors it. And then also, you know, looking at how, how do we cope in this as best we can? Not that, you know, I'm here to tell anybody what to do, but um, I, I really enjoy, I think, the light and viewpoints that Nadi and Vedic and the traditional astrology shines on spirituality. And that that's an area I love to try and bring together is not just astrology, but who we are as spiritual beings in the astrology. We're not our astrology. The astrology is the perception of reality we're experiencing right now in this movie called Time. There is no time. There's certainly time. Time's a reality. There's no question about that. We all get a little older every year, and time goes on. We got to pay taxes and deal with all the monthly stuff. But but it it really is just an experience. And I think the more we can look at it from that viewpoint, the more we come out of it aware. And and that's the game right there, because uh, anybody figures out how to escape death, you please let me know. But in, at least in these incarnations, no one does. And, you know, the, the only thing we take with us is our awareness, it, is what did we gain here? What do we learn? What do we really come out of this this movie with, you know? So um, instead of a receipt and an empty box of popcorn, right, you know, we, right. we really we really want to, you know, grow. And, and I think that's what the religions rightly try to instill. And there's a lot of truths in that. I also think they uh, kept a lot of secrets. And it's not to blame the people. Today, uh, George Carlin might have been right. Some of the best things that come out of the religions is the music, right? And though there's also a lot of truths in many of them. And as long as they don't get too dogmatic, but the problem is they're inherently shutting themselves down because they won't open themselves up to anything other than their doctrines. And this comes from the people who establish them, you know? And this is why people right. are turning, I think, to alternative uh, you know, viewpoints, just to look at other perspectives of who we are. And I, th I think Vedic astrology and Nadi astrology is very interesting in those standpoints. I really do. Well, I've got nothing but good feedback from your readings and your help, too, at uh, your website at, from my listeners at uh, jeffharman.com. Go, go check out the website. Go check out the podcast. And it was really good to talk to you again, Jeff, and uh, yeah. all this crazy. Yeah, Joe, and your K2 dosh is actually really kind of a cool dasha this is a lot of change you, you know you're going to find this next couple of years a lot of change you know it's a journey i just got out of a k2 dasha about uh what was it? yeah about two years ago it was a roller coaster ride but it was actually a good one you know it's all a perception of reality it's like martial arts you know when you understand that the kicks and the punches sometimes not only build character but they also teach us things that we would have never known had we not done it. You know, humans aren't mushrooms. We are active beings. And, you know, sometimes life is a roller coaster ride. But absolutely. when it's all said, you know, we grow from that. Yeah, absolutely. And we've grown. If you guys like this show, I challenge. I think what I'm going to do is do a Lighting the Void Jeff Harmon playlist. So you can go start from the beginning and listen to all the shows that we've done with Jeff. You'll probably learn quite a lot and uh, thanks again jeff for coming on the show it was a real pleasure you bet thank you joe and and good luck to you bud hang in there oh we definitely will you guys have a good night to make some donations help out the station and uh we'll see you guys tomorrow night, night sweet dreams <laughs>